Hello everyone, it's me again, Teacher Ruby, and today we are going to have the first lesson of the fourth quarter in English 9. So we are going to focus on this competency, judging the relevance and worth of ideas, soundness of offers reasoning, and effectiveness of the presentation. In this time of pandemic at the digital age, online media play a crucial role as we obtain much of the information we need to many platforms such as YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Each provides rapid dissemination of information which also allows us to access news to keep us updated. But we have to remember that not everything we see or hear in social media is true. Therefore, we should learn how to assess and filter data before we react or believe in a certain issue. So let's begin with this activity. So take a look at the comic strip below. Let's read the conversation between the two characters, namely Clara and Mario. Clara says, Have you read the Facebook post circulating online since April 2? It was confirmed that the COVID UK variant has already reached our neighboring town, Lukban Kazan. According to my friend who resides in the said town, the alleged person who tested positive is a medical professional who attended to a deceased patient. I am worried about my relatives who live there. I hope they are fine. Mario says, I think you are worrying for nothing because earlier today, April 4, 2021, I have read some news from Inquire.net published by news correspondent Delphine T. Maliari Jr. Based on the article, the Municipal Health Office of Lukban had clarified the said issue. According to them, the mayor only wanted to quote one of the medical professionals who attended to the deceased patient that there is a big possibility that it was caused by a UK variant. But there is no confirmatory test performed yet. They have also added that they are already trying to process a genome sequencing of a direct contact of the late patient and the local chief executive only wanted their residents to be vigilant and safe. Now, upon hearing the conversation between Clara and Mario, which statements are more convincing? Is it Clara's or Mario's? And in choosing between Clara's and Mario's statements, what are the things you considered in making your choice? If you're going to pay attention to the dialogue, Clara mentioned about a source. And what are her sources? Her sources are a Facebook post circulating online and her friend who resides in Lukban Kesson. How about Marius? What is his source of information? His main source of information is a news article published in Inquire.net. So although both have their sources, which of them has more credibility? What do you think is the impact of unconfirmed information spreading online? What do you think this suggests to readers or listeners? As we try to gather information from various sources or platforms to keep us updated, our capability to judge the truthfulness and relevance of ideas is imperative. So we must remember that before we believe the articles or materials that we have obtained, we should check first if it's factual or misleading. Thus, we must know the different tips on how to distinguish factual or truthful information from a faulty one. First, let us define what relevance and truth means. When we say relevance, this is how appropriate something is to what is being said at a given time. It is how appropriate an information is, how related it is to the issue being discussed or it implies any data that applies to the situation or problem that can help towards finding a solution. When we say truth, it is something that has been proven by facts or sincerity. So as we know, fake news is nothing new. But what is new is how easy it's become to share information, both true and false on a massive scale. Social media platforms allow almost anyone 
to publish their thoughts or share stories to the world. The trouble is, most people don't check the source of the material that they view online before they share it, which can lead to fake news spreading quickly or even going viral. At the same time, it's become harder to identify the original source of news stories, which can make it difficult to assess their accuracy. Not just because something is on the internet and it looks professional means that everyone should believe what it says. People should go out and do research and see how true things are. If a major story were to be real, it would be on multiple sources and not just limited on social media. People need to know how to spot factual or truthful information. So how can we do that? First, you have to consider the source. Investigate the site that you are viewing or reading. If you come across a story from a source that you have never heard before, do some digging. Check the web address for the page you're reading, spelling errors in the names or strange sounding extensions like dot info net and dot offer rather than dot com or dot gov or dot org may mean that the source is suspect so whether or not the offer or publisher is familiar stop to consider their reputation and professional experience are they known to their expertise on the matter or they tend to exaggerate so you have to be aware that people who spread fake news and alternative facts sometimes create web pages, newspaper mockups, or doctored images that look official but aren't. So if you see a suspicious post that looks like it's from World Health Organization, for example, check the WHO's own site to verify that it's really there. Okay. Second, read beyond. Headlines can be outrageous in an effort to get clicks, quick picks. So you should focus on the whole story. You have to read and look for details such as statistics, date, name, etc. So if a provocative headline drew your attention, read a little further before you decide to pass along the shocking information. Even in legitimate news stories, the headline doesn't always tell the whole story. So a credible news story will include plenty of facts. It includes uh, quotes from experts, uh, survey data, official statistics, for example, or detailed, consistent, and corroborated by eyewitness accounts from people on the scene. So if these things are missing, question it. Okay, does the evidence prove that something definitely happened? Or have the facts been selected or twisted to back up a particular viewpoint? Third, check the offer. Do a quick search on the offer to find out if they are real and credible. You can check the writer's social media accounts and look for a blue check mark near their name on Facebook or Twitter. This means their occupation has been verified and they are who they say they are. An article without a byline is a red flag. So always do check the offer. What else? Verify supporting sources. Determine if the given information actually supports the story. Many times, this uh, bogus stories will cite official or official sounding sources but once you look into it the source doesn't back up the claim so if you're not sure about the headline or a fact sometimes the simple solution is the best often you can do a search on it to see what others are saying about it a factual news story will always be corroborated by multiple sources However, if there's some question about the story's validity, a web search should also be apparent. Check to see if reputable news sources are carrying the same story. Next, check the date. Reposting old news stories does not mean they're relevant to current events. It should be updated. So some false stories aren't completely fake but rather distortions of real events. These mendacious claims can take a legitimate news story and twist what it says, or even claim that something that happened long ago is related to current events. So always check the data. And lastly, check your biases. Consider if your own beliefs could affect your judgment. We know this is difficult. I hope you still remember our lesson on biases. Confirmation bias leads people to put more stock information that confirms their belief and discount information that doesn't. But the next time you're automatically appalled at some Facebook post concerning, let's say, a politician you oppose, take a moment to check it out. 
try the simple test. What other stories have been posted to the news website that is the source of the story that just popped in your Facebook feed? Use your common sense. Bear in mind that fake news is designed to feed your biases, hopes, or fears. That is why it's very important that we develop a critical mindset. One of the main reasons fake news is such a big issue nowadays is that the is that because they are often believable so it's easy to get caught out much fake news is also written to create shock value that is you know a strong instinctive reaction such as fear or anger this means it's essential that you keep your emotional response to such stories in check instead approach what you see and hear rationally and critically ask yourself what has this story been written? Is it to persuade me of a certain viewpoint? Is it selling me a particular product? Or is it trying to get me to click to another website? Am I being triggered? Right? So again, here are the tips on how to spot factual or truthful information. Consider the source. Read beyond. Check the offer. Verify supporting sources. Check the date. And check your biases. All right. So let's now go over to the different learning tasks that you will accomplish for this week. For learning task one, now that you know the different tips on how to spot factual and truthful information, let us verify your answers on the first activity. So remember the conversation between Clara and Mario? So let's do the fact check by accomplishing the table below. Put the check on the corresponding box for each item if it was clearly provided by the speaker. The person who will get the most checks is therefore the one who stated truthful ideas. So let's start with Clara. Did Clara mention the source? Yes, she did. So you have to put a check mark. Did Clara include supporting details? I'm afraid she didn't. How about the offer? Did she mention the offer of the Facebook post? No, she did not, right? How about supporting sources? Aside from a Facebook post, does she have other sources of information? Yes, she also mentioned a friend who lived in Doktan Quezon. How about the date? Did she mention the date? Yes, she did. She mentioned that the post circulated on April 2, right? Now, let's talk about Mario's statement. Did Mario mention the source? He definitely did. Did Mario mention about supporting details? Yes. Offer? Definitely. Supporting sources? Yes. And date? Yes. So, between Clara and Mario, Mario's statement is more truthful, right? Now, in learning task two, you have to listen carefully to the news clip and be ready to answer the given questions. Now, I am just going to include the link to the news clip, but let us all read together the transcript or the news article, right? Pulakan Kavita Laguna Rizal revert to GCQ until April 4. So this was released on March 22, 2021 by Zian Atanghel from CNN Philippines. The provinces of Bulacan, Rizal, Laguna, and Cavite have been placed under general community quarantine status along with Metro Manila until April 4. In line with this, the Interagency Task Force handling the government pandemic response also approved new restrictions to slow down the rise in COVID-19 cases. Under Resolution 104 approved by IATF, only essential travel into and out of Metro Manila and the four provinces are allowed. Those authorized to go out of their homes include workers in the government and private sector, health and emergency frontliners, persons traveling for medical or humanitarian reasons, persons going to the airport for overseas travel, and Filipinos returning from abroad. Mass gatherings include large religious activities and are prohibited. Weddings, baptisms, and funeral services are allowed, but attendance is limited to 10 persons. Restaurants are limited to offering delivery and take-off services. Outdoor dining is allowed, but only at 50% capacity. 
The private sector is encouraged to adopt alternative work arrangements for employees and reduce their operational or on-site capacity to between 30% to 50%, just like in the government executive branch. The IATF also discourages visits from persons outside one's immediate family or household. A curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. is enforced for two weeks. Malacanang appeals for public understanding since the restrictions will affect some people's following plans. The IATF considers tourism a non-essential activity. Sana po maintindihan ng lahat na this is for the common good. Alam po natin na nagplano na kayo at talagang you are looking forward to uh, this Holy Week break, no? Pero kung papayagan po tayo ng unbated travel ngayon, ay talagang mas mapapabilis ang pagkalat ng mga new variants sa iba't ibang parte pa ng Pilipinas. Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque Despite the restrictions, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque clarifies there is no lockdown in Metro Manila or the four nearby provinces under GCQ. That is because most businesses and public transportation are allowed to operate. Hindi po tayo nag-economic lockdown dahil bukas pa rin po ang mga industriya bagamat in-encourage nga natin yung mga work from home kung pwede. Konti na lang yung mga establishment na ating isinera. Bukas pa rin po ang ating ekonomiya so po pwede pa rin pong magtrabaho. Local government units of the areas under GCQ are ordered to ensure compliance with health protocols as well as quarantine and isolation measures. Zian Arcangel, CNN, Philippines. Now that we have read the article, let's read the guide questions. The first question is, what is the news all about? Is it A, is it about economic lockdown among provinces under the general community quarantine? Is it B, Holy Week break and essential activities allowed to be conducted during the holiday period? Or is it C, COVID-19 Interagency Task Force's new approved resolution to slow down the rise in COVID-19 cases or the resolution number 104? Or letter D, COVID-19 Interagency Task Force considering tourism as an essential activity in places under GCQ. So which do you think? is the main idea of the article a b c or d the correct answer is letter c correct copy 19 interagency task force's new approved resolution to slow down the rise in copy 19 cases or the resolution number 104. if you're going to notice a b and d are actually all wrong First, it was said that there's no economic lockdown. Second, Holy Week break and essential activities are not allowed during that period. And tourism was not considered as an essential activity. In this learning task, you are going to make an infographic. So as a teenager, you are considered as one of the most vulnerable individuals from COVID-19. Thus, it is important that you remind yourself of the preventive measures against the virus. So in this task, you will make a creative infographic out of the informative text from the World Health Organization on COVID-19 facts. So what do we mean by infographic? So from the term itself, it's a combination of information and graphics. So it is a visual representation of information or data, specifically a collection of imagery, charts, and minimal text that gives an easy to understand overview of the topic. So this is the information that you have to work on. So you already have the half of it, the information. So what you just need to do is to translate this information to an infographic. So you have to add some images, probably some charts or tables, Okay, or any other graphics that could accentuate or support this information, right? Now, this is how you're going to be scored. Content, the four points. Design of graphics, four points. Format, another four points. Quality and sourcing for another set of four points. So, remember this. Checking the legitimacy of the information will keep us from being a victim of fake news or faulty information. While as a receiver of information, we need to sharpen our skill in judging the relevance and worth of one's ideas, since we may have to use it as basis of our personal decisions in some situations. So the points to consider in evaluating the truthfulness of information are the following. Source, offer, details, supporting sources, date, and biases. Now, for the assessment, let's analyze the following situations and decide whether it can help you obtain factual information or not. Put a check if yes and a cross if no. Number one, you are reading an article about the number of new positive cases of COVID-19 in your place. 
Then, you found out that the article is already out of date. Is this statement something useful for identifying factual information or not? Check or cross? Cross, right? Why? Because the article is already out of date. In today's world, anyone can get into social media and see thousands of sources displaying news to the world. As part of our future generation, it is very important that you know how to verify information. You know what information is out there and you know how to determine whether they are true or not. Okay? So that's our lesson one for quarter four. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you on our next class. Bye!